Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Today we're gonna have a bit of fun. It's dark in the room. It's We're not doing JavaScript. You know, you'd think that JavaScript would bring the darkness in. But we're gonna have a bit of fun with HTMX and go, I don't know. I've been enjoying it. I've been dabbling in it for the past couple of days. So we're gonna set up a Wii server here and just do like a quick to-do list. And I'll show you just like the beauty of the simplicity of it. And we're not gonna have a node modules. Let that sink in. No node modules. Let's get going. Okay, so let's get going. The first thing we need to do is install Go and then we can just head over to go.dev and don't worry if you just know JavaScript, you don't know anything about Go, I'll try to break down all the code that we're going to write today. So let's hit download here. I'm on Windows. I know, I feel like I'm the only dev on YouTube that just is <laughs> still on Windows. And that's what it is. I like my games. I like my Fortnite. So after you have this installed, you should be able to head into your terminal. And then if you type in Go, you should be able to see the list of commands here. And you can do Go version like that to see that we're on 1.2.2. Okay, if you don't see this, again, if you're on Windows, you might need to set the environment variable. I think it set it automatically, just like when you install Node.js, but in case you, it didn't work for some reason, uh, just head over into your environment variables here and in the path, where's the path here? Path, you can add a new one. As you can see, this one's here. Let's search it here. See program files go bin, and that's where the executable is. So we'll just add it there and we're good to go. So I just made a new directory here and the only two files we're gonna need is this. That one, index.html, we're familiar with that one. And then one more called main dog. That's it, that's all we need. No modules, no nothing. So every Go application is essentially part of a package and we can define that here at the top with the package keyword like that. So in this case, it's gonna be main, all right? So it's gonna be our main function that's gonna execute our application. So you can define that with the keyword func like that. It's very funky, and then you can open it up like that. Kind of looks like JavaScript, the rest of this. I like to actually print something out on the screen. We can import this FMT package here like that, and then we can use the command print line like that, to say something like hello world. Okay, and that's pretty much all we need. So we can open up the terminal, and you can run npm run. Ooh, careful, that's not the command we want. So we can say go run and we'll just say main dog go like that and as you can see we have hello world and once that completes the function completes as well and our application closes so just like how node.js has all these different like packages pre-baked in like making a http server uh, go has the same so we can just set up a http server or do templating uh, without installing additional packages so let's go down here and if we do a http like that see as you can see we can automatically import that and i really like how it does it where it just does like a parentheses and adds it like that that's pretty cool so here we can add a handle funk like that there we go and then here we can define like well where do we we're gonna where do we want to go well let's do slash right so when we hit the slash then we can run here a handler so we can do a function here so let's call this so let's call this the to do's handler like that Let's just go up here to the top. We'll remove this hello world for now and make a bit of space here. So we'll define this to do's handler like that. And the way we do it here is gonna be this colon, colon, the double dot. What's the double dot called again? Equal to, and then we can use the fun keyword like that. So we have a writer here. So this is a HTTP response writer like that. And we also have here the HTTP request. So that's how we can define it like that. So here we can also use uh, Go's templating engine to basically parse this index HTML. And then we can also pass data through it if we want. Oh, before we do that, let's also install this package here. So if you search up Go, uh, okay, there we go, it errored out, but here is the package that we want to get. Okay, so let's install this as well. So in here, we're going to define a variable, let's call this template like that. And we'll set this equal to template like that. Let's see if that imports it. See, we can import this package as well. And then in here, we can say template dot parse files like that. And we can pass in the index.html. So now down here, we can get that template and say execute on it. And here we can pass in the W, which is gonna be our response. 
and then here we can pass now nil or we can also pass down some data so let's just make a quick data here at the top so we'll make a data variable and we'll set that equal to and we're going to say map here is going to be a string and we can also create a type up here at the top so i'll say type to do and then you need to add the struct like that and then here we can define an id for example so i can say id that's going to be an integer and then i can also say a message here that's going to be a string like that okay so let's go down here and i'll say this is a type of to do and we can open this up let's call this to do's like that and i'll just add one to do in here so the way we can do that is say to do and i can pass in the id that's going to be one and the message of buy milk or something like that so now that we have this data defined what we can do is send it through to our index html so we can just pass that down like that so to actually put this up and serve it we need to run http listen and serve and we can do it on port 8000 here and we'll pass nil here for the second parameter i think if you want to run a custom um handler here you can pass something down uh, but you can also do here if you go to the beginning you can do a log the fatal so if something goes wrong it'll just terminate the program and console log it out uh, to the terminal here so let's see what's wrong with this uh, this might not import see you might need to wait a second and click or my machine is just being very slow today so let's hit save and if we run the program again there we go you might get a pop-up like this I think it's my firewall uh, let's open up the chromes so we'll go over to localhost 8000 and let's see what we get nothing why is that well let's head over to our html we have nothing here so let's set something up go htmx and let's say woo let's hit save you need to terminate this and rerun this there we go let's head back here and there we go we got the woo yay we are up and running so since we're passing the data down here right we passed the data uh, we have access to that in here so what i'll do is just set up a quick like ul here and what I want to do is actually like loop over those uh, to do's. So you can do double curly brackets like that. And you can say range dot to do's like that. So that's our to do's here. So we're, we're mapping over it and then we can close it here by adding an end like that. Okay. And now in the brackets here, we can just do an li and we can output the title for example i don't think we named the title we named it message so let's do message like that and let's hit save so let's rerun this you can do the uh i think nodemon works as well but they have a go equivalent which doesn't work on windows only if you do it through the uh linux subsystem but i didn't set it up yet so sorry about that well let's try this again there we go we got buy milk let's go if you enjoy the simplicity of Go so far, you'll also enjoy the simplicity of today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. With Brilliant, you're not just memorizing facts, you're developing critical thinking and problem-solving skills through interactive lessons. This method not only helps you understand complex topics, but also improve your overall cognitive abilities. Consistency has always been a key to growth and Brilliant makes this super easy with bite-sized lessons that you can just complete in a few minutes each day. Recently, they launched a suite of new data courses perfect for anyone looking to dive deep into data analysis. You can explore topics from Bayes theorem to multiple linear regression using real-world data sets from companies like Starbucks and Spotify. So check out the link in the description below or visit brilliant.org slash develop by ed. You'll get 30 days full for free and also 20% off your annual subscription thank you so much next up let's also set up a form so we can actually get some data and pass it down into our handler here and create new posts so let's just go down here and we'll create a form there we go uh, for the action here we're going to remove this because we're going to add hdmx so let's open this up let's do what should we do in here let's do a label so this is going to be for the message so let's call this message like that 
And right below here, we're just gonna add an input for now. And we're gonna add a type text, that's fine. We'll do an ID of message on it and also the name of message like that. We'll also do a button to submit this. So a button with a type of submit. And let's name this create like that. Okay, so we're gonna add HTMX to this. We're not gonna go like super crazy in depth on anything here. I just wanna kind of show you uh, kind of a basic of it. So let's head over to HTMX and all we really need to do is add the script tag here via the CDN. So let's copy that over. So let's copy that over and paste it somewhere up here like that. And that's it, we have HTMX hooked up. So now we can display the new posts anywhere we want with a couple of directives here. Uh, so first of all, to actually submit this post to a specific handler, we can call the hx directive post like that. And we can set this equal to slash add to do like that. And let's hit save and we'll leave it at there for now. Let's create this handler that we just made. So let's go back here. We can say http dot handle func like that again. And this is gonna go over to, what do we name it? Add to do. Oops, make sure you have add to do like that comma make sure it's not single quotes that won't work and we'll create this add to do handler up here so let's just create a variable here we can call this message and we can read that form value from the request by saying r dot post uh, form value like that and then the name that we gave it in this case it's message so i'll pass that down there and then we'll create our template here so i'll just make a template variable We'll say template dot must, and we'll parse that index HTML again like that. Okay. Now our to do is gonna be a type of to do there, and I'll just pass in the ID that we had up here. Right. We need to define that. I'll just do a length like that from the data, and I'll just say the to dos. I'll just add one to this. So we'll say plus one. I'll add a comma here because I also want to pass down the message like that. Okay, so message, message, right from here. Ooh, there we go, done. So now all we need to do is take this to do and send it back. So we'll say template dot execute temp, oh, sorry, execute template. Oh, come on. There we go. And then I'll pass in the W there. And then here for the second argument here, I'm going to pass down to do list element. Now, what is this? You're going to see in just a second. And the last one is going to be our actual data, right? So we're going to send in the to do. So that's it. Here, we forgot a slash. Let's add the slash in there and let's hit save. So the second arg, uh, I messed it up element. There we go. The second argument that we passed down here we can actually add it in a block to like where to actually render out that specific data. So check this out. If I just go up here in the range, I can open up double curly brackets and say block. And I can say to do list element like that. So now check this out. How cool is this? I can go to the form and define a hx of target here. And I can specify where I want to insert you know, the data that I'm getting back from that post request. I can say add to do list like that. So I can go here to the UL and add an ID of to do list. And I can also specify where I want this to be inserted. So before or after the last to do. So I can say HX swap and set that equal to before before and like that. And I'll insert it as the last value. Guess what? We don't really need to do anything else. That should technically work now. So let's close this up and run this back up again. We'll hit allow and let's give this a shot. So let's open this up, hit refresh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, and actually we, we missed another end here. So let's also add one more and let's run this back up. Otherwise we get this big nasty error. So let's close that up run up main.go, hit allow, let's head back here to our server, hit enter, and there we go. So let's give this a shot. Wow, we, and let's hit enter, and we are not getting the data back. Okay, well, I wonder why. 
And actually the reason why we're not getting back anything is because we never appended this new to do to the data here. So let's just do data like that and we'll get the to do's. There we go. And we'll append data like that with the to do at the end. Okay. Now if we go back here and check, if we type something in and hit enter, look at that. <laughs> we just got a to do list up and running and barely any lines of code really. That's all of it right there. And from here, the, the really cool part is you can also uh, like hook up Tailwind to this. I'll just do a quick CDN here. So I'll just go here and import this like that. Let's head back to our program. And I have a couple of stylings already posted here. So just post the script tag in here. I'll copy this over. This is pretty much from ChatCN. Uh, so if I go over here to the input, I can add that class. Um, I can also do it for the button as well. So let's just add some classes. And then for the ally here, I have the actual like card class that they use. So that's gonna be this one right here, just as a super simple example like that, okay? And if we head back here and refresh now, look at that JavaScript engineers in shambles, lovely. So there we go, that's just a quick example on how to get HTMX and go up and running. So yeah, there we go. That's just like a quick preview on how Go and HTMX work together. Uh, yeah, if you like this type of stuff, I don't mind learning more of this and also kind of like explore this together with you on this channel. It's probably the worst time to also mention my Ultimate Next.js 14 course, but I want to mention it because it's fantastic. It's 25 hours of content. We learn how to build a full stack e-commerce website. And I think it's cool because you'll learn a lot of things about web development from setting up two-factor authentication, just like the whole auth system, uh, creating products, you know, setting up Drizzle and all of that good jazz. So, so if you want to have a look at that, check out ultimatenextjs.com. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.